New Orleans Inspector General Derry Harper speaks with reverence about the mission of the office he is leaving. The issues that the Inspector General has jurisdiction to review and issue reports on is as significant as any local or state office in the country. After almost three years, Harper said he is leaving his $200,000 a year job early to spend more time with his family. But as we revealed previously, he actually was forced out after an uprising by virtually his entire staff of more than a dozen employees. Members of the Ethics Review Board, which supervises the office, agreed, negotiating his departure after a lengthy and contentious executive session. There was no one on the board who felt that he should stay. Things got so bad, some city officials gave up long ago trying to work with the office. We would call and call and, I mean, no one would even answer the phone. The IG's office is supposed to act on tips from whistleblowers on where to look for waste and fraud. But under Harper, some whistleblowers came from inside the office, blowing the whistle on him. The board obviously uh, w was getting information from a number of different sources and from its own observations of the lack of productivity of the office. Harper, hired based on a strong resume and years of experience, came on board in early 2018. He vowed to get a factionalized office back on track. Multiple sources say the opposite happened. I think the bottom line was there have only been a, a couple of reports, almost all of which um, were either stale uh, completely or or significantly. We finally caught up with Harper today to address his departure, and he admitted that some of the chaos he inherited and staff vacancies hampered his work. But because we didn't have senior leadership to supervise the divisions, there was no permanent general counsel. We even lost the interim general counsel at the end of 2018. The office was unable to release several reports. While the turmoil remained largely hidden, some red flags surfaced. These civil service records show that early on, Harper dealt with an internal complaint about discrimination inside the office. As a hired consultant looked into that complaint, a veteran investigator tried to approach Harper about, quote, corruption in the office. That investigator, Gordon Hyde, was then fired for insubordination when he tape recorded a conversation with Harper in violation of his orders. It seemed pretty unanimous that there was a, some serious, serious problems in a $4 million a year city agency. It did. Absolutely. Over the past couple of months, I've gathered accounts of other problems, but one in particular was glaring and ongoing. Civil service records obtained by WWL-TV show that the IG's office manager, a woman named Jessica Lang, has enjoyed a lucrative and unusual job arrangement. The records show that since 2015, Lang has been dividing her duties between two full-time jobs, OIG office manager paying $39,000 a year and executive director of the Ethics Review Board paying $72,000 a year. The Ethics Board is the volunteer body that oversees the Inspector General's office. Despite the impossibility of being in two places at once, on paper, Lang worked for both until the beginning of 2019. Mr. Harper uh, insisted that she become a full-time employee of the Office of Inspector General rather than sharing time with the Ethics Review Board. So at Harper's request, Board Attorney Dane Cialino, the only other paid employee of the ERB, ended Lang's duties. But the records show that Lang's double titles and double salaries did not end. In fact, civil service pay records show that Lang continued to earn a double salary that now sits at $110,000 a year. She says she does no work for the ERB. She does no work for the ERB. How could that possibly be justified? It can't be justified. Payroll timesheets show Lang splitting her days between the two positions, three hours for one, four hours for the other. But instead of split salaries, she was getting paid two full-time salaries. So was she pulling the other three and four hours for the Ethics Review Board? After 20, the beginning of 2019, she stopped doing all formal tasks for the ERB. So what is the board doing to investigate? Well, the, um, our council is dealing with this right now. How is this allowed to continue another hour, much less another day, much less until the end of this month. 
Lang's arrangement was not allowed to continue. One day after we brought it to the board's attention, Celina sent Lang this letter of termination. What was your reaction when I informed you that she is still listed as executive director of ERB at that salary? Yeah, I, I didn't believe you. And I called the CAO's office and came to learn that, uh, that she, in fact, was still on our rolls. We asked Harper about the Jessica Lang situation. Almost immediately, we started trying to unravel that, not to do anything that was not transparent, but in order to just be able to directly tell her you are not to do any work for the ethics review board. It during... didn't get unraveled. It did not get unraveled uh -huh. until I raised it and she was immediately terminated. One person, two full-time jobs, two full-time salaries. How could that happen? Well, you, you're saying something I'll have to go and look into. Agency designed to root out waste, fraud, and corruption, and it's overseen by an ethics review board. That's right. That's right. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I don't know what to call that except a big failure. The office's vision statement includes a solemn pledge to, quote, preserve the public trust by meeting the highest professional and ethical standards. It's worse than ironic. It's shameful. Mike Pearlstein, Eyewitness News.